a while ago I did a video on five different nether hubs for your survival world and I think it's safe to say it did really well. It is at almost seven and a half thousand views and I really cannot thank you enough. I really do appreciate it and a lot of people said in the comments below that they wanted a follow up on how to build the crimson nether hub. A few people did ask for the other nether hubs but this one was the most wanted request. I may do a tutorial on the other ones in the future but for now we're just sticking with this. Now a few things to note. Build this in the crimson or the warped forest. Any other biome will spawn ghasts and they may destroy your build. I would not recommend it. Also, you will need all of these blocks, but I would recommend getting more just in case you run out or accidentally place one here or there. Also, these ones are for the respawn anchor refiller design. However, that is completely optional. I would also recommend building this on the bedrock ceiling and also wearing gold armor in case any piglins spawn but that is entirely optional and it is not actually possible in bedrock edition as of yet. Everything else should technically be possible in bedrock edition. Also if you're planning on adding a beacon you are fully welcome to build it below the bedrock ceiling as beacon beams can actually shine through bedrock. I've also got a design for a nether tunnel however this is completely optional and I won't go into too much detail. As well as this some of these blocks are completely interchangeable especially the flooring design which can be pretty expensive. You're also more than welcome to texture the walls I decided not to just to make this tutorial a bit easier but in my original design I did add the other end of the basalt into these blocks here which is this cobblestone texture and I also mixed in some of the planks with this a stripped crimson hyphae design. But as well as that I will be linking Logical Geek Boy's video in the description on how to get onto the bedrock ceiling and build nether portals up there. Furthermore I will be using the Vanilla Tweaks brighter nether resource pack as well as the better bedrock resource pack just to improve the quality of the video. You don't really have to use that but if you wish I will leave it in the description below. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the video. To begin with, place your obsidian three blocks above the bedrock ceiling and make sure it is ended up as a three by three grid. Now, I would recommend having the corner blocks for at least the top two layers, but it's really not too less necessary. And remember, light the portal with a flint and steel or a fire charge, whatever method you like. Next up, build a pillar out of the crimson hyphae on either side. You are fully welcome to hollow this out once you're finished if you wish to save on resources. Here is me building it in the background. Next up, place three crimson stairs here and build it up with crimson hyphae up there so make sure it's the stripped variant and then build up along here by five blocks with the stripped crimson hyphae then make sure to place the lodestone right here and then place uh, four crimson stairs around it you can then build it along by three blocks like so and place a slab here and a slab here and repeat that on the other side and then place two stairs here, three in the center and another two here. There is the platform that you will be standing on every time you exit the portal. Now make a 19 by 19 square floor. Now it doesn't really matter what you make the floor out of so long as you think it looks good. However, I will be making a grid pattern using blast furnaces and smithing tables. If you are using the same pattern, please be aware that it is very expensive and also make sure to place these, uh, the blast furnaces at the, in the right direction as, the, as if you place them in one direction it will rotate and it may look weird. Next up, place a crimson hyphae one block away from this first stair block and another one two blocks away from where your first archway will be and a blackstone slab in between both of them where the beacon will go through. Then build these up to the same height as these other pillars here and 
Once again, you can add things like torches and other details on the side of them just to light up your area a tiny bit more. As you can see, I have marked out different areas around the square. I'll let you pause the video to see where these blocks are placed. And in between each of these layers, place three crimson hyphae like so. Build this up just to three blocks, however, we will increase that later down the line. And then on top of these blocks, place a 5x3 area of basalt like so, and it will fill in these blocks perfectly. Then on each of these areas, place two crimson stairs like so, then get two crimson trapdoors on either side, so uh, four in total, and place it like so, and then place one slab like that, so it's a nice arched area. And then repeat this for each one like so, so I'll repeat it one more time, and I'll do it here as well, just so you can get it into your head, and then just repeat it along every single one. Now above this, place the blocks as I do. So firstly, bring up three stripped crimson hyphae to six blocks tall here, and then five right next to it on either side. And then repeat that here with five here like so. And then place four for every single one after that. So as you can see, it goes six, five, and then these last three here are four. And for the rest of these here, just bring them all to about four blocks in height. You're more than welcome to bring them up to an increased height so that the roof is a bit taller. But I would recommend this height because it still feels quite spacious, but it doesn't require too many resources for survival mode. Then get these crimson high phase and bring them up to the same height as the first pillar next to it, like so. As you can see here, we will bring this one up to 5 rather than 6, even though the tallest version of this one is 6, and bring the rest up to 5 as well. Don't forget to fill in every single section with stripped crimson hyphae, as I've forgotten to do these ones right here. Next up, behind the portal, go to the right to the end of the square and build up a 2x1 pillar up to the same height as the pillars next to the portal using the crimson hyphae. And repeat this on the other side. Since you won't be seeing the top, so you can actually use crimson logs, I just prefer to use hyphae just because it's easier to place down. Also, you fill in these areas here with stripped crimson hyphae like so up to the border and then use some crimson stairs right here just to make it a bit easier to slope up. This is technically entirely optional however I would recommend to place it anyway. Then continue the pattern you've been doing around the room with a three tool section of basalt and a three tool section of stripped crimson hyphae and remember to repeat this little design here like so. Now for this section here, Blake, break this block here and place a dispenser and don't forget to fill it with glowstone. Then place a respawn anchor here and go behind it here. This is to add the respawn anchor refill design. If you don't want to add this, that is entirely optional. Then break this block below the observer and place a target block there and next to it break a block there. Once you've done that, place a block of your choice here and place some redstone dust here. Then go down like so and build a 2x2 two two grid. You can break this block if you want to save resources. Then do two redstone dust here, a redstone repeater and a redstone dust here. Basically what this does is the observer detects when glowstone is being put into this respawn anchor and it will send out a redstone signal here to the repeater just so this does not connect to any redstone dust here and then this the target block will draw in some redstone here this is entirely my own design and i did showcase a different version of it in my previous video and as you can see if you place some glowstone in here 
it will fill up automatically. Now finish this pattern going all around the room just here by placing three basalts here and filling the rest with stripped crimson hyphae like so. And don't forget to fill it in here as well. And then use the stairs, the trapdoors and the slab just to create that nice curved gradient there. Remember once again you can texture this with the crimson planks like so, however I'm not going to for this design. Now to put the finishing touches on this design, grab your black stone slabs and build it across by two on this side here, then go up by one over here and then go across by two once again. And once you've done that, you can do exactly the same here. Once again, going up by half a slab and going across by two once again. Now you may need to increase this part here in, in height because you now need to do exactly the same over here and just fill it in with two rows of blackstone slabs. And repeat it here, but make sure instead of two blocks wide, make it three blocks wide because this is an odd number in a room. So the central design needs to be an odd number as well. So just fill this along here. Once again, you may need to increase the height in some areas and just to make sure it connects to the ceiling like so. And then just mirror this on the other side once again, just so the room is symmetrical and the roof is complete. Now, as I said, I will briefly go over the nether tunnel design. So put a blackstone slab in any of these areas here in the central top block and then build backwards with blue ice as far as you need with the tunnel. If you aren't able to use blue ice, you're fully welcome to use packed ice. However, normal regular ice may melt in the nether and then place crimson trapdoors along just so mobs cannot spawn on it. Then get some red stained glass panes and build along the side uh, at the same length. This is so mobs cannot walk onto the path and also so the boats you are using will not be able to fall out. Then continue the grid pattern like so and make sure it goes out by three blocks in total. So build out like so. Then go along and place a temporary block along here. Just a row of them will do nicely. Then place a, a pillar here. Go along by five, like so. And make sure it goes up by three blocks just for now. And then use the basalt in between, like so, as we have been doing for this whole video. Then build up these sides by five stripped crimson logs, like so. And make sure to bring the pillars on the side to exactly the same height. You can then use the same gradient you have been using all along the side here, just having a nice shallow slope going right to the center, like so. And repeat this on the other side. You can then add a blackstone roof as we have been doing this entire time, and once again, it will be complete. This nether tunnel design can be repeated on any of these sections and you can increase the size of this room however you want. This is a very modular design, so it's really easy to replicate and you can just have these nether highways all around the area. Furthermore, you could add different rooms to have storage and things like that, so it's very customizable. But with that out of the way, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and share this video. It really does help out the channel. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.